Okay, this is stripping down the um, Gotway Monster. So I'm going to start by uh, taking out all these outside screws and the battery cover, removing the foot plate. There's screws hidden just under here. You don't need to take this off, you just need to peel it back a little bit. You'll see it. Um, and we'll take it apart. This one is one it was using one wheel, one way, the thousand miler. So there are some modifications. There's only, well, only really two, which is the charge ports on the other side. Um, there's two charge ports fitted in. Show you that in a second. Okay, remove the foot plate. So I always slide those back again so the washers, spacers, keep there, keep them safe. Now you're fully exposed so you can actually take that off. Really important you have a cup of tea. So what I'm removing now is the battery cover. That's what it's called. So 13 of those screws. Now you might find it difficult to prise open this battery cover. And if you sort of squeeze like I just did then, push your thumb up against there, you can usually lift it. There's a battery in here and it's stuck to that battery. So carefully get your hand underneath it. And you'll feel where the battery is because it's really tight right where the battery is. Try and hold the battery with your fingers. It's gonna hurt potentially. Hold the battery with your fingers whilst you prise away so you don't pull the battery at the same time. It's just a lot easier if you don't do that. And there we go. Right, that is the battery support cover off. There's a magnet inside, which is for the foot plate. This also makes a good tray for putting all your bits in if you wanted to. Okay, so what you have is you have the control board, battery, motor cable. So it's important to remember if you're touching any of this stuff, memorize how this is, screenshot this or whatever you want to do, take a photo if you're taking it apart. Especially the connections here if you're replacing the board, they're siliconed in. See there's one there, and there's these here. So you need to remember the position of those. First things first is you always disconnect the battery. That board is now isolated. Press the power button, and that basically takes the power out of it won't turn on now. So that's all the power out of the board. And then so you've got another battery connection. In the Monster, there's three batteries, two one side, one this side. They're 800 watt batteries, if you've got the um, 2,400 watt hour version. Out of the battery are multiple cables. You might find it stuck down this side as well, with the sticky back. And just see where these root. So obviously, and then again, keep an eye on where these are actually going. Okay, and that is your battery removed. Okay, next up, you've got the cables um, connecting to the board. Now, these cables pass through connectors here, actual clips that hold them on. Um, you can unscrew these and take the complete connectors off, or you get a screwdriver underneath it and just pop the connector open, freeing up these cables to come out. Uh, and then you can get to the, the loom, basically, the wiring loom, get it out. Um, what I'm going to do is I will take this board off so you can see what's behind the board. Okay, so you can see what I did there. I pushed the screwdriver in and out, and that removes these cables from that clip there. So basically a clamp holds them on. Um, right. And what you've got is you've got a screw there, screw there, screw there, and screw there. You just remove that, and the board will be loose. Again, these screws are silicon on, so you may want to reapply silicon when you put them back. And there's the board off. Now, as you will see, underneath the board, you have a grommet. Now, the grommet sits in here, and what it does is it keeps the water and it keeps the dust out So from your board. So this is exposed. This is where it gets cooled down. Loads of air space in here, and obviously the motor whizzing around. Pours nice cool air over it and keeps the board cool. So remember, let me take this off, clean this down, if indeed you are reassembling the same board, clean it down, good and proper. Clean the rubber grommet gasket back down. Uh, replace it this way, don't leave it stuck to the board, because you'll never be quite sure whether it's gone back into the recess. 
like so. Um, so I say you'd have to you'd be very, very careful if you're taking these connectors off, you need to be really, really careful. With a little screwdriver, just try and remove this silicon part here. Um, just slowly break the silicon and then a needle wobble whilst connect, holding on to just the connector. Do not pull on the cables. Very good chance you're going to rip the cables out of the connectors and then you need to replace this whole loom. So you need to be really, really careful when you extract these. Uh, and they're obviously buried in silicon, so just simply cut away with a screwdriver and then wobble a little bit and keep working at it. It will take time, that's fine. Take the time, don't break it. Under here you have the fans for help cooling the board. So there's the wiring for that that runs through this loom. This plastic here is just literally wound around. So all you do is just pull that around, 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 and you can extract the wires. That's, that's pretty easy to do. Um, so yeah, that part you've seen, this is the alarm. So two screws hold that alarm on. If that's faulty, it's part of this loom again. And all you do is remove that. You'll have to extract the silicon again. You pull that off um, and you can slot in a brand new alarm. In fact, what I'll do is I will take the board off for you guys um, as much as I can. So you've got three motor cables here. Um, so yeah, you just disconnect those. And you'll be able to replace the board once you've taken the silicon off of those. So what you need to do is remove the cable, uh, the, sorry, the, the heat protector. In case of working it around, if you've got excess silicon on there. Boom, there we go. So that's connected up. That's that done. Let's fold those back over. Keep those protected. You can then remove the control board. Let's put it to the side. And so you've got this loom now, which is all detached basically. Um, and that is part of the battery loom. So keep that in place unless you've got some real reason to disconnect it because the other side, you can pull that through that way. Um, what you've also got is they're called ba um, battery, uh, sorry, they're called cable covers. You can keep the screw in there, they just hook in. So they slot down in um, and they slot in there. So you just remove that one and remove that one. Again, you've got these covers, so I would leave those in there for now, but you can remove those. We'll see how deep we go with this. Um, okay, remove this screw to the side. Move this to the rear light cover. Keep these separate so you know which is which. There's one this side and one that side. So this is holding the main section of the body on. Okay, so you've got screws here, um, which go through and pinch the shells together. And you've got some the other side as well. So just undo those. They're a Phillips screwdriver to style. Now what I've actually got is a damaged front light unit. Um, so these two here are just spinning, not actually doing anything. So these ones are, they're all connected up. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna spin this over now. I have to drink some tea. Okay, same again. Okay, so if you've got a really stubborn battery cover, you can either put something in here, protect it. You could take that and just push it over like so and then work it again and get your fingers underneath and try and hold that battery pack down and separate the two. And remember there's two batteries this side.
nice and slow. Okay, here we go again. Okay, as you can see, I've got charge port there and there. So what's happened is this loom here isn't connected up. Uh, each of these batteries is going direct to a charge port. So it's a little modification we did for the trip. Uh, just disconnect that one, disconnect that one, and you should be able to slowly bring this up. And it basically stuck down just like the other one was. Um, and then this up here. Disconnect that one. And so that's what we've got, look, basically. That one. There we go. Go. Scrub right now. Take that out. Disconnect, and this is the wire I was talking about. You can just push that through. When we come to take the shell off, this will actually come through. Disconnect that on that one. <clears throat> so that is the charge port. The battery we did. Battery. Again, watch how those are rooted through. It's all very, very compact there. And let's remove these again. Okay, so same again, you need to remove these screws out. Okay, so, don't forget that side. Okay, so these might be taped on. Just remove the tape. And then slide that out. And you've got that little loom there. Can go up through there, just remember that, that all goes. And that is your side piece, which comes off like so, and you will see all the mud on the inside. So, just careful with that. Okay, and this is your motor unit. Careful with all the cables and stuff. Now, from this side, you will see that you've got these the screws, and what this does is it attaches this whole switch panel assembly on. You've got a front-like section, uh, a rear light section and the center console. Let me go and show you those now. It is all available on the website. This is the rear one, just like that. That's the front light assembly, just like that. And that's the switch panel holder. Uh, so that's that, front light uh, and the rear. So I want to replace the front headlight unit because it's actually fallen and cracked all the way along here. So I'm going to replace that now, but I'll show you how to break down this whole section. So you don't need to take it all the way out because they slide out because there's a, a cutout in there so it's just enough to actually lay to rock it out like so right that's that section that's the whole panel section removed and then you've got the rear light now if you want to take these off completely you're going to have to untwine them from that wiring loom uh, they will be wrapped around in that wiring loom, which I'll show you in a second. And you can see this one's really dusty. That's already snapped. So the problem I've actually got with mine is it's broken completely. There it is, that piece should be with that piece. Um, but not only that, this here is part of the shell that I took off from this side. Um, it's actually snapped off. Um, so I need to be able to clamp that with a pair of pliers, remove the screw from that side and the same with that one, and then replace this whole section here with a brand new panel and a new front light. So as you will see almost straight away, it is properly glued in place. So, but it's only held in with a screw glue aside. So just very much like the silicon, you need to be really just careful with it and work its way out. And there is the headlight unit removed. Now what I need to do is undo this whole wiring loom to take, take this off and then feed that back through again. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to flip this over. Now what we need to do is just follow these cables back through. Um, what I'd recommend 
is you undo this plastic covering and redo it up the same way. And there's another one of these lovely clips for you to get your teeth into. Okay. Right, and you will also notice that it's cable tied just for good measure. Be extremely careful that you do not damage the, um, the little wires. What I recommend is trying to cut the top of the cable tie off. That way, you shouldn't damage the actual cables. If you try and force it underneath and in, it'll likely to damage the cables. So. Okay. Feed this back through. That is off. That back out. Broken. New one. Back through. Through on there. That back through. And you've reapplied the screw. And then you can put some glue on it. My screw is actually caught up in this uh, <laughs> glue, the original. <laughs> Okay, that is all back in. Definitely glue it back in, because um, what you end up with is um, a wobbly unit if you're not careful. Uh, just make sure this backing plate is tight as well, to stop any water and dust getting in there. And that can come loose once you're taking it apart. Uh, there isn't a bulb in there as such. There's an LED bulb with a reflector in there. Um, and that just, that's what emits the light. So it's not like you can take a bulb out and replace it if this is faulty. It's an entire new unit. Again, that you can get that on the site, speedyfeet.co.uk. It's on there as a replacement part. Um, but there we go, that is complete unit. Now, the same again for all these components here, except for the screws, um, you just get the glue off and remove those for any of the panels you want to replace. Fans, we've never had any go, but there are four screws here, each on each fan. Again, then fed into the loom. Um, and basically this panel will come off as well, so you can take it off. You end up with just the motor unit then. So that is stripped down to its bare bones now. Um, to get that off again, you need a special tool uh, to slide this through, or you can make one yourself, because you need to get on that nut and wrench it around if you want to take these off um, for any particular reason. Not sure why, maybe a massive crash and you bent them maybe? Don't know, but anyway, and then you'll be right down to literally nothing. As they say, if you want to put it back together again, as in the Haynes manual, reverse the procedure you've just done. So just reverse back and put the bits back one by one in reverse order, and you'll build it back up again. Um, I hope that has helped uh, people understand how to strip these down, what they're composed of. Um, hopefully that's helped. Any questions, just comment below. Uh, please like and share and subscribe. Cheers, guys. Until next time.